そう実際問題人間なんて蓋を開けてみるまでわからない俺も情報屋として今までいろいろそういうことはやってきたけど 100% 人の心を操れるわけじゃないんだただ背中を押してやるだけさイザヤ・オリハラ is everything in ドゥラララ In a series that sprawls outwards, covering such a multitude of intermingling plot lines and character perspectives, he's the closest thing to a common denominator amidst the chaos. With a knowing grin and a penchant for setting the first domino and watching things go, he's the puppet master, the eye of the storm, seemingly paradoxical in his sensibilities and behaviors at times, yet simultaneously entirely consistent. He's behind the majority of the conflict and chaos in the series, but he's not malicious. Rather, he's just an instigator and a subsequent interested observer, doing these things for fun. He's the devilish orchestrator, and for him, Ikebukuro is something of a mix between his chessboard and his playground. So, I think that's why I'm going to be able to get a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit. 人間が好きってことかな人間ってものが面白くて興味深くて仕方ないんだよねあああくまで好きなのは人間であって君じゃないからここ重要。<笑>イザヤ claims to love humanity, and he often enthusiastically displays this, although his definition of love is much different than one would assume, one involving a sort of pseudo experimentation that borders on sociopathy. As an underground information broker, he's a catalyst, giving out information as he pleases. He tends to simply set situations off, push and prod people a bit, and see where they lead for his own entertainment. As is strongly implied throughout the series, what he specifically loves about humanity is the unpredictability of human nature. As such, he greatly enjoys putting people in enjoyable, tempting, difficult, or chaotic situations in order to observe their reactions. With a thorough understanding of human behavior and tendencies, he's able to determine people's thoughts and predict their reactions with high accuracy, despite and maybe because of their unpredictability. But a huge distinction is that he does not know exactly what will happen. He just has a knack for reading behavior and seeing patterns, and his influence helps to set things off in ways that he may have foreseen on a general level. So it's a mix of him knowing a ton about humans and being able to foresee things, and him being constantly surprised by the way things happened and the extent of their reach after he sparks them. Because, after all, it wouldn't be so interesting and addicting if he could predict everything exactly, right? And the fact that he desires so much to bear witness to human reaction coalesces pretty nicely with one of the story's primary ideas that of ever evolving, dynamic society, as we'll touch on later. But all of that is relatively easy to grasp on a shallow level, given how Isaiah behaves throughout the story. What isn't so clear is the why. Why does he find humans so interesting? Why does he find a rare few to be boring? Why does he act in different ways with certain select people? Why does he do the things he does? Why does he find the entropic nature of society so fascinating? And given all of that, what is his philosophy and how does he view himself and his position in the grand scheme of things? I'm not even sure if there's even an answer to all or any of these questions, but I think that a great amount of meaning and intrigue can be obtained by deducing from his role. Please note that I have not read the light novels for the series, so my perspective is narrower than it could be. The first thing to establish is how Isaiah approaches life and people specifically. His style is to neither be too close nor too far from humans. He avoids making intimate connections, but finds himself so enthralled by human behavior that he can't stay away. In the chat group, he's often seen stirring up rumors to try and fuel conversation in order to cause a reaction. He offers himself as a weird sort of guidance for several characters throughout the story, but he doesn't do this out of compassion. For Isaiah, he does these things out of interest, enjoyment, and pleasure, and nearly every bit of advice or knowledge he gives is given as an indirect way to satisfy his curiosity. 
The way he interacts with others clearly shows a high level of interpersonal and emotional intelligence, so it isn't as though he lacks perspective and is incapable of conceptualizing empathy. But he doesn't allow himself to care beyond his lies and facades, and he rarely shares these feelings, so he never really applies empathy. He understands how people tick on an intellectual and emotional level, but he doesn't share their sentiment. And that may be one of the biggest keys to understanding just who he is. Another interesting thing to note is that Isaiah speaks about humans in the third person, almost as if he's not one of them. And even if that isn't the intended meaning of that phrasing, he clearly segregates himself and has a distinct energy compared to the rest of the cast, and by extension, compared to humans. It allows him to see things that he wouldn't otherwise, with a clearer mind, unbiased and unaffected by emotion, and he uses this perspective to create the chaos he so desires. Ikebukuro is a hotbed of rumors, ever-changing culture, word of mouth, and memetics, molded by the interactions and connections within the city, and Isaiah sets so much of that off because he's able to detach himself just enough. <laughs> the fundamental basis of Isaiah is a unique form of truth. While his words are full of dual meanings, deflections, redirections, and deception, he is often very capable of cutting through lies and bias and emotion and layers to see people for who they are. And I think a lot of his fascination stems from the fact that others are incapable of doing the same. If everyone saw the world, and others, for exactly what they were, and if everyone was always honest, the world would be pretty simple. But instead, people are prideful and dishonest, and as a result there are layers upon layers of intrigue and falsities, which, along with personality factors, experience, environment, and any number of additional variables, makes the world such a deep and interesting place. This is what adds the nuances and knock-on effects that Isaiah finds so enchanting. Isaiah's interactions with Ryo early on help put together a picture of the type of people he enjoys and doesn't enjoy. Initially, he finds her disappointing and boring. She has secrets, but she's upset at her parents because they do too. She's a hypocrite, and she says that she wants to die, but really doesn't. She's dishonest, but her brand of dishonesty is the blandest possible. She's someone who talks the talk and points out flaws, but cannot follow through with conviction nor look inside herself to see the darkness she sees in others reflected right back at her. While Isaiah is adept at predicting the unpredictable, Rio was predictable, and that's why she was boring. That is, until she actually took the plunge and tried to kill herself upon realizing some harsh truths. And that plunge is what Isaiah relished. Here, he took gratification in the fact that she realized that she was not special, that she was the same as everyone else, and that maybe it didn't matter if she died. There is also, of course, the possibility that Isaiah knew that his words would cause her to jump, in which case he was lying and he actually did find her interesting from the start due to having the potential to realize the truth, and due to him wondering if she'd learn from his words. Isaiah can accurately evaluate the hearts and minds of others, but he cannot literally look into them, nor can he predict stream of consciousness thought or instantaneous realizations and what they can lead to. And that is what keeps him coming back, looking for new things and learning, keeping things so fresh and interesting. It's a beautiful mix of predictable and unpredictable. It's hard to know for sure whether Isaiah actually means all the things he says, but I believe him to be honest when he proclaims that all humans are the same. 
He loves the special things that people do, but I don't think that he believes people to be special. Or maybe he wants to think that people are not special, for his own sake. Forgive my theory crafting here, but I find many potential ideas about Isaiah's motives to be enticing. He makes no strong bonds with others, and he talks about humans as if they were separate from him. So maybe he's trying to prove his humanity. He frequently questions why people trust him as if they were foolish, so at some level he knows that what he's doing is potentially harmful and perhaps immoral. Maybe he sees himself as a dark, twisted, quote-unquote bad person, and looks at himself with a sly smile, and due to his love for humanity, wants to prove himself to be a part of that community through revealing that everyone is just as broken and dark as he is. To bring everyone down to his level, or rather, to show that everyone is the same. And then, maybe he can be a true part of something, a true part of the community he so loves, and that Durarara fixates on. It would add a semi-sympathetic tinge that may seem inconsistent, but I don't think this sort of dynamic needs to be heavy per se. Maybe he feels this way, shrugs and laughs it off lightheartedly in that way that he does, and continuously pursues this anyway. <laughs> I think that the mystery behind Isaiah leaves plenty of fair game for these sorts of interpretations, and there is enough substance in the story to fuel all manner of viewpoints on him. And if he truly wants to consider himself a human, his jealousy of Shinra and Shizuo would make sense. Isaiah has noted that Shinra can securely separate himself from the world due to his love for Selty, as if that love makes him confident enough to somewhat isolate himself, yet still feel a part of humanity. Meanwhile, Isaiah has also been said to have been jealous of Shizuo because the latter's volatile behaviors are super characteristic of humanity, and because others tend to flock to him and befriend him despite his aggressiveness. It's implied that he thinks that if he kills Shizuo, he may be loved instead, in the way that he loves others. This jealousy, and the fact that he cannot predict Shizuo's behaviors, is why he is one of the rare people he hates because he represents a standard, in both humanity and connection, that Isaiah sees as currently unattainable. Shizuo diverges from the moral decay and dishonesty that Isaiah sees in humans, and that disturbs him, because while he does love their entropy and may want to be a part of them as a result, the possibility of them not being as he believes them to be at their core is frightening to Isaiah. He thinks that all humans hide darkness and put on facades, that everyone is the same, but that they have different ways of expressing this and burying the truth, and that this is enthralling. The variability in individuals, the way that different situations will bring about different outcomes. He is fascinated by human nature, but he comprehends it. Yet if he cannot understand a human like Shizuo at a basic level, he must be farther than ever from being a part of humanity. And that could be a very scary thing. But regardless of the reason why he serves the role he serves, the fact is that Isaiah is on a different narrative plane. As said, he is an instigator and observer of the chaos, stirring up rumors and sparking flames, but apart from his bouts with Shizuo, he is not often part of the conflict. He is part of the audience, and his behaviors and interactions form the foundation for a bunch of the themes in the story. Isaiah understandably rubs people the wrong way when he is being upfront and when he isn't deflecting or deceiving. However, if you think about things from a certain perspective, it says a lot of the world that someone simply being honest with his likes and dislikes and how he sees things is perceived as incredibly rude. Humans are so full of mistruths, posturing, and pretending that when someone decides to be real with them, it is perceived as antagonism. Isaiah contrasts all of that with his truth, and that puts him in a different universe altogether. He is honesty. He intends to bear the truth of people to the world. To see how the chips fall, how the dust settles once people realize the things he already knows. He wants to see how the world reacts when he flips a mirror on them. Do they cower in fear at what they themselves are? Do they repress and avoid? Or do they embrace it? These ideas, he ponders, are some of the very ideas that make the story so effortlessly entertaining.
A common theme throughout Durarara is change. People come into Ikebukuro trying to find a way to alter their lives, to find a new sort of fulfillment. We tend to hate the feeling of standing still, yet can be lazy or unsure of how to overcome that inertia. And Isaiah knows this of people. So he offers them a chance for change and excitement, and a look at the other side. And he uses this, plus his aforementioned know-how of the dishonest commonalities between people, to do what he does. It's this knowledge and wisdom he has, his ability to cut through the fluff, that makes him an attractive person to talk to, and for some, an attractive person to trust. Humans are drawn to their perception of honesty, so as much of a douche as he is, he's got his own malevolent charm to him, both in-universe and out, through his laid-back intelligence and ability to act forthright, in spite of his intentions and intentional conversational mazes. Due to his psychology, ideals, and motivations, Isaiah is an advocate of the volatile nature and expressions of humanity. How they interact, how they impact one another, collide, bounce off, go different directions, and meet again. It's a very mechanical and cold way to ingratiate oneself with mankind, and that's why he is what makes Dudarada tick. Because humans have trouble detaching themselves from their own situations in order to see the bigger picture. Humans lie to themselves, and humans are clouded by bias. But Isaiah considers himself to hardly even be a human, and as such, he can play the knowing jester, seeing people for what they are, indulging in his ignorance and knowledge, providing the cynical truth, and watching the chips fall. It's integrative with the story's observations of the spontaneous and organic nature of memetics and community, how history and culture are sensationalized as humans tend to do, how those we encounter and the impact we make on the world may all just be a series of coincidences brought about by natural human wants and desires and darkness, how everyone withholds truths from others, and how the marks we make on the world occur when those truths come out or maybe even through the way in which we try to hide them, with Isaiah at the heart of it all, influencing, setting things off, observing, ever the catalyst, ever the shit disturber, and ever the lover of humanity. Many thanks for watching. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> この町は情報屋の俺でも知らないことがまだまだまだ溢れ生まれ消えていくこれだから人間の集まる町は離れられない人ラブ俺は人間が好きだ愛してるだからこそ人間の方も俺を愛するべきだよね<笑>